You were there in Pasadena in the Rose Bowl in overtime that saw Michigan win 27 to 20. I guess first big picture, happy new year. What did you make of what we saw? Yeah, thank you. Um, I was struck by how jittery both teams were at the, at the onset and how many opportunities Michigan blew in the first half, Matt, to literally put the game away. I mean, they, they were playing so much better. Uh, the fact that Alabama got the lead uh, is still somewhat stunning and could have put the game away. And then in the fourth quarter, it reminded me a little bit of uh, two years ago in Indianapolis when Alabama had had the game in hand and not really in hand, but they, they were in a good spot. And then they just got run over. Nothing Alabama did in the fourth quarter was good. And then even then, Michigan tried to give the game back. Uh, it was uh, it was a, be- a bewildering game. Um and it answered a couple of questions for me uh, that Michigan is legitimate. Uh, it was hard to believe that going in because of what we had seen from the Big Ten. But but I came away very impressed. And I think anybody who isn't uh, clearly uh, was not watching the game. Yeah, Paul, you're, you're a Michigan fan favorite, as everyone knows. And coming out of this one, and I'm glad you, you said that about Michigan, because I, I, I'm going to sit here right now and tell you that I was dead wrong about Michigan outside of the Big Ten. Because my thought with Michigan is, and I've said it on here, go go find the clips, that Michigan was a dominant football team. They've, they've proven it from game one till game end. My question with Michigan, was a two-game sample against Penn State, Ohio State, enough to warrant a big picture dominance outside of the Big Ten? And it was clear, Paul, for four quarters yesterday, if not for the missed field goal, if not for the missed extra point, and a couple of blunders, Michigan from outside of the what we thought was going to be a J.J. McCarthy interception on the first play of the game, Michigan was the dominant team, the better team from kick to finish, and I was dead wrong about them not having the personnel to be able to compete big picture outside of the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, there, by the way, there's no reason why you wouldn't think that, uh, and it got worse as the, as the, as the bowl season went on uh, after – after Friday night and Saturday with Missouri and Ohio State and, and Penn State and, and Ole Miss. I mean, th- those were those were Michigan's two biggest wins. Right. And other than that, Maryland, which I'm not even going to count the Maryland-Auburn game, is, is something that we re- really should waste time with. So it, it, it's understandable. Uh, I, th- I think the Harbaugh thing uh, just sucks so much oxygen out of, uh, out of objectivity, really, including my own, about how good is this team. And, you know, we, we knew they were good, but, uh, you know, when had we seen it other than the Ohio state game in the last three years? Uh, and, and I say that because there weren't, there weren't too many other samples to, to really bite, bite down on the Georgia game. We know what happened two years ago, the TCU game never could right. uh, be a, a race. So that's, that's where we were going into this game. Yeah. And look, it, it was, they've been in the playoff three consecutive years. They've been unable to get past the semifinals the last two. You see them get paired against an Alabama team that won 11 in a row and just beat the number one team in the country who had won 29 straight in Georgia. And you're thinking, here we go again. This is a worst case scenario for Harbaugh and Michigan to get to the national championship game. But as, as it went on, and again, people will get fired up about this and that's the beauty of college football. But as it went on, I kept saying over and over again to myself, like, oh, not only – Michigan's better. Michigan can hang in this thing. Michigan has the speed. Michigan can do this. And I know that sounds uh, like you're disrespecting a team, but I, again, I just didn't see anything out of the regular season other than that. And and as the game went on, I'm like, if they don't screw up, Paul, they're going to win. Well, I, I didn't like a couple of things about Michigan leading in where, where Harbaugh suddenly going to change things. Uh I've never really seen that. There's, I've never seen that work. There's this old line, Matt. You've been to, you covered Augusta so many times that I think it was the late Bobby Jones once talked about some some guy saying, "I, you know, come to come to come to the Masters to find my game." And he, and, and and Jones said, "You come to the Masters because you have a game. You, you don't yeah. you don't find it there." Right. And I felt like that was Harbaugh, uh, but he had to do something different. I, I'm still not really sure what he did. <laughs> because his team looked about as out of sorts at the beginning of that game as you could possibly eat. But what this game was really about was Alabama. This uh, Nick Saban tried to make it about his team afterward. Well, we could have done that. Well, 
in the end, Matt, at the risk of sounding blasphemous, did, did we overvalue Alabama? Did we, because it's Nick Saban. Uh, I, I was, I mean, you know, you never think he's going to lose. Uh, and most of the time he doesn't. And, and, but it always felt like this team was living on the edge because they were always on the edge this year. When Jace McClellan took it in, sorry, I've got the uh, video autoplay going on here. ESPN.com. What are we doing? When Jace McClellan, oh my God, there we go. When Jace McClellan took it in to give Alabama the lead and then Will Riker kicked the field goal, I think it was to make it 20 to 13. Mm -hmm. Everybody, and I don't care, even Michigan fans, they're not giving, they're going to tell you different. There wasn't anyone watching who was there, who was at home. There isn't anyone that thought that Michigan was going to come back and win that. And that's where you talk about Alabama, Nick Saban, getting the benefit of the doubt because they've done it so many times. You think that they're done and they find a way to pull it out. And they were this close on that punt return from hell that went back to the goal line from doing it again. Oh. And I, I'm Paul, I'm with you. At, look, Alabama, I think, earned the right for the benefit of the doubt by what they did against Georgia. But if you look at this body of work from Alabama, maybe you're right. Maybe history gave them the pass that this roster potentially shouldn't have. Yeah. And by the way, they beat Georgia. I mean, and I, I don't know how they did it. Um you know, what, you know, whether some, there's something going on that Kirby Smart just gets out of, out of sync. But, but Matt, even in the Georgia game, there was a bad call. There was a fumble, two, three plays. That's not – it's a different game. You can say that about a lot of games, but when you're talking about a team as good as Georgia, uh, it, 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 it does make you wonder. And Alabama always had the talent on that team, mm -hmm. but it, it wasn't nearly as deep as, as in years past. And I, I think that caught up to them. What what did you make? Because look, there have been times where he's looked brilliant, and there's been times where he's looked very pedestrian. And I thought yesterday was one of those days for Jalen Milrow that Michigan <clears throat> figured out keep an eye on him, keep a spy on him, don't let him get those chunk yards. We're gonna make him be a quarterback. We're gonna make him throw because we believe we've got the corners to cover the receivers, and we believe we have the scheme to where Milrow's not gonna be able to figure it out. And he couldn't all game. Yeah, I, I think he 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 overperformed a little bit this year. Um, the hype machine just kind of goes in, uh, but it was really the offensive line that started playing really well. Um, Matt, the, the center situation with McLaughlin has been a problem all year. Yeah. It just metastasized yesterday to a point where uh, I mean it was driving Alabama fans and football fans in general crazy. Uh, but but ultimately, I, I think Nick Saban got a great deal out of this team. But it yeah what and I, I think I think even he bought in. Uh, it was another thing too, which I, I thought was fascinating. The Michigan players just really resented the fact that that everybody was picking Alabama. I mean, but the the one group of people that never bought into that were, were the betters. I mean, the line actually went up on the final day. I mean, we're not talking about a big line. But that was that was that was that that was really bizarre. How uh, everybody I know, oh Alabama's going to win. It was a little bit like two years ago in Indianapolis. Yeah, when you and I both knew Alabama was severely severely deficient. Uh, that you know, there were their two wide receivers were out. Uh, they they had a lineman out. I mean, football people knew that they were in trouble that night. But, oh yeah, I, I'm I'm sitting with you in the mezzanine on Sports Night. Yeah, I, yeah, Alabama's going to win. I have no idea why I said that, but. 90% of the time when you say that, you're going to be right. But that's the history piece, right? That's the history piece with Nick Saban who came in winning seven national championships. You've just seen him do it when their backs are against the wall. And, and history, a lot of times, leads to a current opinion. And I think that's where we were with this Alabama team. And I understand what I'm about to ask you is going to either melt the internet or be absolutely nothing. Based on what we saw yesterday, I know Alabama beat Georgia, but should they have been the fourth team over Georgia or say Florida State 
based on everything we now know coming off the field yesterday? The answer is yes and yes. Um, they beat Georgia in the biggest game of the year in the, in the SEC. Uh, I, I think that means something. Uh, you know, we, we, we negate the Texas loss on September 9th because that Alabama team uh, in, in, in Atlanta was not the same team. I mean, right. they were a really good team, and they weren't that night in Tuscaloosa. Matt, Florida State shouldn't have been in. And I, I am not going to point toward the humiliating performance in the Orange Bowl as the explanation, but I was really glad to see that. I was, I was sorry Georgia didn't win by more than 60 uh, because I've never seen a fan base get a freer ride uh, off of something that they didn't, they didn't earn, nor did they deserve. Uh, and they did it to themselves. I mean, since, since we, we, we talked on Selection Sunday, Georgia, Georgia had more opt-outs than I've ever seen for a major bowl game. I mean, we're talking about the Orange Bowl. This isn't, yeah. uh, you know, this isn't the Pop-Tarts Bowl. Um, on top of that, shouldn't have anything to do with it, but I'll mention it because it's fact. They ended up suing their own league. I mean, this is who they are down in Tallahassee. They are, they're, they are, they are becoming perceptively a renegade program. And I, I'll never know whether that affected the committee. Uh, everybody says it didn't, but they didn't, they didn't help themselves. Yeah.